Welcome everyone to this week's Fish Friday episode. Today we are on Fish Friday number eight. Um, hard to believe that we're already on Fish Friday number eight, but these are moving so fast and I am so much enjoying doing this for you guys. I hope you're enjoying it as well. So without further ado, let's just get right into it. Um, today's fish that we are talking about is um, what I am going to passively call the dirty giant of the sea and what i mean by that we are talking about this fish the mola mola or common mola or ocean sunfish mola mola is the scientific of the name of this fish um many of you have probably seen pictures of this throughout your lifetime these are really cool fish um, these are in the family Tetrodontidae, which if you remember, um, we have already done a fish from that family, the Fugu puffer fish. This is in the puffer fish family. So that's a really interesting. It shares some characteristics, but it also doesn't. Um, it is native to the tropical and temperate oceans around the world. Basically, these are found world worldwide. Um, there are four or five species of this genus. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't quite remember. I do know the most recent species of this was found in 2015. Something this big was found in 2015. Um, in the Polynesian islands, there is a slender one called the slender sunfish, I believe. And it's definitely pretty. It only gets to a meter long. Now, its main claim to fame is it is one, if not the heaviest bony fish in the world. Not like sharks or anything like that. Those are your uh, cartilage shark, uh, cartilage fish. Um, but this is the heaviest bony fish in the world. The adults can be between 247 and 1,000 kilograms which is between 545 and 2,205 pounds. Um, the max size that's really been ever recorded, it is 3.3 meters uh, long. So from the tip of the snout to the tip of what you would call a tail, 3.3 um, meters is about 10 feet, 10 inches. Um, it is, and that fish was 4.2 meters from across the fin so from the tip of this fin to this fin and that's about 13 feet 9 inches he's actually not fat he's not thick they are pretty thin actually um they are compressed laterally so they're tall but they're not wide i mean they're pretty wide um as you can see this looks like a head with a tail you know makes it really cool they just flat out don't grow kind of this back end it kind of fuses into this um oh i can't remember what it's called but it fuses into this tail fin um they actually don't uh swim by moving uh this fin what they do is they um move these these fins it's dorsal and anal fin moves them um, together to swim think like a stingray but sideways that's how these swim. They use this as a rudder. So this turns where they're going and they move these to swim, to actually swim. Um, something interesting about these, they don't have scales, just like the other puffer fish that we talked about. Um, and as you can see, its skin is very gray, but it's also very thick. This is, this skin's, this creature's skin is very thick. Um, it is up to 7.3 centimeters or two and three quarters inches in certain spots. That's how thick its skin is. Um, so pretty darn thick skin. Um, as I kind of alluded to calling it the dirty giant, um, these fish develop a lot of parasites on their, on their skin. Um, multitudes of parasites. I don't even want to get into there. So to clean themselves, um, they go into these drifting kelp forests, which those have um, cleaner wrasses, um, which are little tiny fish. So they'll go into that kelp forest and just let those little fish just eat the parasites off of them. 
or they'll actually bask on their side. Um, so they'll go up to the surface and bask on their side like this, and they'll let seagulls come down and pick at the parasites to try and get them off. Another thing that they have done is they have actually been shown to try and jump out of, excuse me, out of the water to crash down on the water to um, try and dislodge as many parasites as possible. They have been known to get up to 10 feet in the air when they do this. So just because they are only moving those two fins does not mean that they cannot get some speed. Um, another uh, claim to fame for this fish, it lays the most number of lays the most amount of eggs um to known to any um, vertebrate the females can lay up to 300 million eggs let me say that again the females can lay up to 300 million eggs and that that's quite a bit um I forgot to have this picture set up the little baby sunfish the fry actually kind of resemble a puffer fish as you can see it has a bunch of spikes um develop those spikes are then lost um as their as time goes on but it kind of alludes to the fact that they were in the puffer fish family these are a generalist predator predator um, here you can see the skeletal structure as we were talking about it's real dense and thick, but um, It is it does have bones But it is a generalist predator meaning that it'll kind of eat anything it can it'll eat small fish um, fish larvae squid crustaceans and um, It'll eat sea jellies and salps and it used to be thought that sea jellies and salps were thought to be the primary prey of this fish. Um, but in later years, it's come to find out that sea jellies and salps only make up 15% of the diet of this um, fish. And a lot of people, you might be wondering, what is a salp? I haven't heard of a salp. Everyone knows what a jellyfish is, but do you know what a salp is? A salp are these long strands, kind of similar to jellyfish, but these are actually... Um, very large zooplankton that are these make a clone in a long strand together as you can see here um, pretty interesting but that's not we're, what we're talking about we are talking about the mola mola <clears throat> now it does oh i should have looked up this as well i apologize now the mola mola, just like most fish, does have pharyngeal teeth, um, which are teeth in the throat. Um, I cannot seem to find it, a picture of that. Um, they are, um, the teeth in the throat are actually spiked and curved inward to, um, they are spiked and curved inward to shred any potential food source um, going into the stomach. Um, if we can find that, I might post a link for it um, in the YouTube comments. So stick around, um, look down in the comments if I find it. <clears throat> now, as we were talking about, they do bask at the surface um, a little bit, Tavi. Um, so they do bask at the surface, and that was thought, um, it used to be thought that that's what they did almost the entire time. Um, they would just spend most of their time basking, turning sideways at the sun. And it turns out that they spend most of their time at more than 200 meters deep, 660 feet. So it's kind of thought, they don't really know how this is. They're almost, they do go up and bask, but then they dive down deep. So they may be going up there to store warmth to make these deep dives. So real interesting. We're discovering new things about this pretty, you know, pretty consistently. Um, these are docile. These are docile. But 
they are vulnerable, kind of on their way to endangered. Um, they are a little bit hot for food. Um, they are considered a delicacy in some Asian countries, across some Polynesian countries, but they're not hot consistently for food. However, they are caught a lot in bycatch. And bycatch is when commercial fishermen go out and they're setting nets for other fish. Mola mola sunfish are actually pretty commonly caught in these nets. Um, and it's really sad. Their population is dropping fast, really fast. And it kind, to, kind of alludes to that question. And this is a question I want you all to consider um, as you think about this. Not to be too much of a Debbie Downer. But especially on Fish Friday, which is a wonderful day of the week, and I hope you continue to enjoy it. But how is it that a fish that almost no one eats and has almost no commercial value is being fished to extinction? How is that possible? Think about that. Just something I want you to think about. You know, people may get onto commercial fishermen or get onto the people that are fighting the commercial fish. Well, that's their job and things like that. But it's things like this that why people, some people are concerned. How is it that a fish that is eaten by very few people and has almost no commercial value being fished to extinction? Just something to think about. All right, now let's get into some questions. Um, Tavi, is it true that only the jaws of fishes are made up of preservable bone material? That is not true. It is very difficult to preserve fish bones because um, fish bones don't link together like mammal bones. Um, they don't really have the tendon strength, so fish skeletons fall apart very easily. However, they do that. Now, it is true that only the jaws of sharks are made of preservable bone material because the rest of their skeletal structure is made of cartilage. So, and Xylan asks, do their teeth regenerate like sharks do? Are you talking about their pharyngeal teeth or are you talking about their front teeth? Because just like puffer fish, fish they only have two teeth that come together in like a beak sort of uh, formation. And that beak is so hard, they don't really need to regenerate. The pharyngeal teeth, I imagine, um, don't ever fall out or break enough for it to matter. So, I'm, I'm going to guess no. Their teeth don't really regenerate because um, they're not really going to eat anything that requires that. All right. We're going to give it a couple of seconds for more questions. Oh. One last interesting fact before we sign off. Mola Mola actually means millstone. And there is a couple of local European legends of where a baker got captured by bandits and they tied him to his millstone and threw him out into the ocean, tied to the millstone, and then the millstone started swimming. And that was the first sunfish. So, pretty neat. <clears throat> so... Looks like we don't have any questions. So thank you guys so much for coming in. I really appreciate it. And I hope to see you again. Please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, I really would like to see anything. Please give me a suggestion. Um, I, I would really appreciate it. Next week will be a freshwater fish. So um, give me a freshwater fish. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your loved ones. And peace.